Life on the Road with the band Sanctus Real. I remember being in the back of a Chevy van, sleeping on a sleeping bag six months pregnant, just thinking to myself, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and life wasn't much better at home. It'd be really easy for those arguments to get out of control. The song that saved their marriage on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. We're delighted to have you with us. And today, something special. What's going to happen today, Pat? You are going to be introduced to Ufano. Ufano? Is that a new neighbor? Is that a new child? Who's Ufano? Well, he's my new buddy, and I'm going to show you okay. what a Grand Prix dressage horse looks like in action. In action. With so me you on him. Come on, brother. All right. Well, I'm ready to see that. Well, it's coming up in this edition of the 700 Club. Well. The United States, folks, has the largest number of people in prison of any other nation on earth. Can you believe that? A lot of them there for drug offenses and minor offenses, but whatever. 2.3 million people are in prison in the United States. And some experts warn there that these prisons are a breeding ground for radical Islam. In fact, Pat, that has some members of Congress worried about a potential threat to America. But others say... It isn't a serious concern. In fact, John Jessup has a story from Washington. Recruiting new converts to radical Islam on the Internet or Islamic religious schools is nothing new. But law enforcement officials have said for years, America's prison system is a fertile breeding ground for Muslim extremism. <laughs> new York Congressman Peter King called the hearing on Islamic radicalization behind bars. He says it is a real threat. The most well-known examples are former convicts Richard Reed, known as the Shoe Bomber, and Jose Padilla, convicted of conspiring to support terrorists. The hearing highlighted other terror plots that involved contact with people in prisons, like the Lackawanna 6 from Buffalo, New York, the Virginia Paintball Jihad Network, and a Senate report that shows three dozen Americans who converted to Islam in prison but are now in Yemen, the home base for al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Experts say Islam can be a good influence, but infiltration by radical clerics plus a lack of standards and practices creates risks both inside and outside the prison walls. Instead of a, providing a balanced, peaceful, contemporary perspective of one of the great and peaceful religions of the world, we are left with a hijacked, cut-and-paste version known to the counterterrorism practitioners as Prislam. Democrats charged that the threat is overblown and discriminatory, suggesting that prison gangs and lone wolves pose greater risks. Republicans accuse them of being short-sighted and blinded by political correctness. I, I just must say the political correctness in this room is astounding. How many of the uh, street gangs in either New York or California have an ideology which is dedicated to the destruction of the United States? Democrats shot back. Let me um, define what my political correctness is, and it happens to be uh, this document, the Constitution. Now, this was the second in a series of hearings held by Congressman King. A spokesman in his office told me that there will be more to come. John Jessup, CBN News, Capitol Hill. You know, people who talk about Islam as being a great and peaceful religion don't know what they're talking about. Muhammad was a warrior. He was a bandit. He robbed people. He killed people. He told his the followers to go on jihad, jihad. And if they were killed in jihad, they went to heaven and they had 72 virgins. That's what jihad is about. That's what uh, Islam is about. And <clears throat> Islam divided the world into two. And I want to say it again. Read the book if you don't believe it. Dar al-Islam, that means the, the area of the world that is under the uh, control of Islam. The other is Dar al-Harb, which means the world at war. There's only two things. There's no such thing as peaceful coexistence in the Quran. It is not a peaceful religion. It's a religion of war. And you go back in history, and they waged jihad and, and uh, overturned uh, countries in, in North Africa. They uh, overturned the Middle East. They were in the, on the gates of Vienna and uh, attempting <clears throat> to uh, take over by force of arm, nation after nation. It is not a great peaceful religion. And I applaud Congressman King for bringing out the things that are happening in our prisons. 
they, as these uh, young men in that stressful situation are being radicalized. But aside from that, we must, we must go back and revisit our laws that put so many people behind bars. We've got to do it. It's costing a fortune. It is ruining the lives of people. It is taking a, a juvenile offenders and turning them into hardened criminals. It is a very dangerous thing we're doing. 2.3 million people incarcerated. The, I mean, America, land of the free and home of the brave, the biggest incarcerator in the world. That isn't a good thing that I want to be associated with. Lee? Pat, in other news, al-Qaeda has a new leader. Ahmed al-Zawahiri will take over in the wake of Osama bin Laden's death. Zawahiri had been the terrorist group's longtime second in command, and it was widely believed he would assume the top spot. He and bin Laden began working together back in the 80s. The Egyptian-born doctor was one of the first to promote the use of suicide bombs. Zawahiri is believed to be living somewhere near the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Defense Secretary Robert Gates says Pakistan's arrest of several CIA informants is a reflection of the harsh reality in the world today. The informants provided intelligence for the raid that killed bin Laden. Gates appeared before a congressional committee, and he heard from members who are growing impatient with the continued aid to Pakistan. How long do we support governments that lie to us? When do we say enough is enough? Most governments lie to each other. That's the way business gets done. Do they also uh, arrest, do they also to, arrest the people that help us sometimes. Uh, when they say they're allies? Sometimes. One of those arrested is the owner of the safe house the CIA rented to observe bin Laden's compound and the man who copied the license plates of vehicles that entered and left that compound. Louisiana state senators have rejected a bid to display the Ten Commandments on the grounds of the state capitol. They were afraid of being sued. The Louisiana House was in favor of the display. The bill said private groups would pay for the monument, but it didn't include any provision for the cost of a lawsuit. The valedictorian of a Vermont high school says his graduation speech was censored. Kyle Girwar wanted to talk about how Jesus and the Bible changed his life. But he told the audience that he was allowed to deliver only half that speech. Then he held up the pages of the speech and said, This was the message God gave me, and I'm not allowed to share it with you. The school's principal says Girwar was allowed to mention God and Jesus in the uncensored part of his speech. But he told the Burlington Free Press that public schools have to be careful about letting religion be preached at a school-sanctioned event. The Food and Drug Administration has developed a new labeling system for sunscreens. And as Efren Bram reports, the government is hoping the new guidelines will save lives. Starting next year, consumers will notice a change to sunscreen labels. The FDA says the current labeling system is too confusing. People were getting a false sense of security with sunscreens the way they the way they were under the new guidelines labels will no longer be able to claim a sunscreen is waterproof or sweat proof the fda says there is no such thing it recommends sunscreen be reapplied every two hours as well as every time you get out of the water another change in order to claim a specific sunscreen prevents skin cancer it must block both uva and uvb rays and have an spf of at least 15. UVB rays protect against sunburns that may contribute to skin cancer. UVA rays go much deeper and cause premature aging, which contributes to skin cancer. These changes will help people make better informed decisions about using sunscreens and allow them to more effectively protect themselves and their families from sun-induced damage. Last year, more than 60,000 people in the U.S. were diagnosed with melanoma the most dangerous form of skin cancer. Melanoma used to be a disease of older men. Now melanoma is the most common form of cancer for young adults in their late 20s. FDA officials say their new guidelines will not only make Americans more aware of the harmful effects of the sun, they will save lives. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. Can't be too careful out there, Pat. Melanoma is a scary form of cancer. It sure is, and it's uh, if somebody has one of those things, it's best to get a dermatologist to look at it and take it off while it's still in a benign stage. Yeah. You have a little dog. 
I do have a little dog, Ginger. Ginger. Yeah. Does Ginger make you happy? Does Ginger make me happy? I love that little puppy. She's, she's so cute. Four pounds, just she's lovable. She's therapeutic. She's very therapeutic. Well, yesterday we had Big Blue. <laughs> <laughs> is is blue therapeutic? Oh, you can't believe it. He he he's so therapeutic he'll kill you. But in any event, <laughs> he's he's now got I don't know about 1,800 people on Facebook. He he signed up a whole lot of others. He's got a great <laughs> log, blog. But anyhow, uh, Lee's got a story about what they're doing with therapeutic dogs. Yeah, Pat, uh, dogs really are man's best friend. New research indicates they can reduce stress, lower blood pressure, and even accelerate healing. Swedish Edmonds Hospital in the Seattle area has developed a program called Therapy Pups. Dogs like this one, named Armani, visit the surgery floors on a regular basis. They're even outfitted with cameras. A custom-made harness is wrapped around the dog's head, and then all it takes is the push of a button, and you're rolling. The pup cams are getting thousands of hits online, and the pups themselves are a hit with the patients. Oh, oh, you have such a big face. Can you kiss? Can you give a snuzzle? Give a snuzzle? Oh, what a good boy. <laughs> Swedish Edmonds uh, Hospital started the Therapy Pups back in 2008. They plan to expand the program. Uh, I don't know how sanitary that is. That looks like, what is, is that a bull mastiff? I think it they, is. They slobber a lot. Kissing that thing, I mean, come on. But you should have seen the women over blue. I mean, they were hugging him and loving him and scratching him and oh. It sounds so like a song, loving and hugging and scratching and sneezing and pleasing. Yeah. I'm sorry, keep going. Okay. <laughs> well, Christy, I told you that uh, in addition to the dog therapy, yes, Pat. Uh, Ronald Reagan said the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a man. And I want to show you a new horse. His name is Ufano. He's 17.3 hands Look high. Look at that beauty. And there he is. There he is. That's Ufano, the big, big horse. Wow. Okay, let's see what we can do with him. Now, he's doing a shoulder in there. You see that movement? It's uh -huh. three tracks, and you know, it looks like he's dancing, isn't it? It isn't does. That, isn't that nice? Three, that's you, Fano. And uh, the, 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 you see? Look see at three that. tracks. He, the, the back hind leg comes in, so you got three tracks. Mm -hmm. that, that's shoulder in. He does that very skillfully. And... Uh, Look, you look like a pro. And uh, this is what's called... Is that called, you? Is that a stunt double? No, 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 that's a stunt double. My Aunt Minnie. <laughs> that's what's called a pee-off. And he is a, he's a, a high-level dressage. There he's doing a nice collected canter. And um, he is... Uh, isn't he a nice horse? He's a beautiful horse. Okay, so does he work more on voice command, or is it, you know, with the reins? How does Seats this, how does work? and rain, but I, I talk to him. I just, you know, have to talk to him. And... Uh, what do you see? see and he that? likes you. He's he, a new horse. He's, he, he's, yeah, he's a new he, horse. But I, he likes me. I, I feed him and he sees me coming and he starts licking his lips. He's such a nice horse. He's a beautiful horse. Isn't he beautiful? And speaking of horses, I did have to notice this today, Pat. You know, so, you're always kind of spiffy the way you dress and I noticed your tie today has little horses on them. Well, that's just for you. That, that's the, <laughs> Can right. you see that? Yeah, the I see that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think that's cute. That's kind of right. cool. Would you see the horse? I love the horse. Now, we had this conversation before, and I'm going to ask you again, Ziggy, your other horse. Are you showing Ziggy love? Uh, well, he's out in the field, and he's happy, I think, eating a lot of grass. Okay, because I just want to make sure that that, that love, you well, know, goes. If, if you want to come out and love him, he's welcome <laughs> to see you. Can I ride Ziggy? Sure, you can ride him. All right, cool. Okay. All right. I think it'll be lovely. Christy. All right, anyway, we're going to switch from horses to food. Up next, they prolong the shelf life of food, but they actually have the opposite effect on your life. Trans fats are really like plastic, and when we eat them, the risk for heart disease, cancer, stroke, infertility goes up. Get the skinny on trans fats when we come back. In the meantime, you know what you can do? You can log on to CBN.com and check out our live chat room. We're asking you to send us your questions and we're going to bring it online with those questions later on in today's program. Our mom lives life with a passion. Full throttle every day. But she's not as limber as she used to be. Mm, of course, she wouldn't admit it, even after she fell climbing out of her old tub. She's had to slow down. And that's been frustrating for her. We wanted her to remain independent. So we got her a new Premier Care walk-in bath. When mobility becomes limited for any reason, it's time to consider a Premier Care walk-in bath. 
with our exclusive hydrovesant therapy. In fact, Premier Care is the first walk-in bath and shower company to pass stringent testing requirements to receive the Arthritis Foundation's prestigious Ease of Use commendation. Premier Care has developed a full line of quality walk-in baths and walk-in showers to fit most every mobility need and available space. Choose the walk-in baths and showers committed by the Arthritis Foundation. Choose Premier Care and Baby. For your free information kit, call 800-606-6439 now. Tested, trusted, recommended. Premier Care. Tomorrow. James Bond has respect of everybody. A man tries to imitate the movies. I wanted women, and I realized that in order to have the women, I needed the money. And winds up on the wrong side of the mafia. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Plus, American Idol's Mandisa. Minus 100 pounds. How she did it. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. Well, you've probably heard warnings to stay away from processed foods, but most people aren't even sure what processed foods are. Our medical reporter, Laurie Johnson, explains how to recognize them, how they can be hazardous to your health. Staying away from processed foods is easier when you remember they're foods that have been altered from their natural state. Have you ever wondered why processed foods stay fresh for months when the same food made from scratch starts turning moldy in just a couple of days? It's because food manufacturers use man-made ingredients to prolong a product's shelf life that unfortunately may have the opposite effect on our lives. For instance, trans fats are oils infused with hydrogen. They raise bad cholesterol and lower good cholesterol. Dr. Michael Aziz, author of The Perfect 10 Diet, doesn't mince words when he tells his patients trans fats will kill them. Trans fats are really like plastic, and when we eat them, they incorporate in our cells, and the cells cannot communicate or talk to one another. In turn, hormones are disturbed. Weight gain follows. But more troubling, the risk for heart disease, cancer, stroke, infertility goes up. Trans fats are common in commercially fried food and packaged foods, especially baked goods. But you won't see the phrase trans fat in the list of ingredients. Instead, look for the word hydrogenated. And beware of labels claiming no trans fats. They're often still in there because the FDA allows food with up to a half gram of trans fat per serving to be labeled trans fat free. The problem is those servings can be small, so we eat many of them, and those half grams add up. To give you an idea of how bad trans fats are, here in New York City, it's against the law for restaurants to cook with them. So you go back to basics. Carrie Canizaro is the executive chef at the popular home restaurant, as fats, when we go for sweet, we're using buttermilk, we're using butter, and savory, we use extra virgin olive oil. Uh, we cook with a blend of extra virgin olive oil and vegetable oil. We fry with soy oil. Customers like the ban. We might as well be healthier, you know? Vending machines are often loaded with processed foods. In addition to trans fats, they often contain too much salt, which can cause heart problems and creates a craving for even more salt. Another addictive ingredient often found in processed foods is high fructose corn syrup, which is linked to obesity and diabetes. Although manufacturers contend it's nutritionally the same as sugar, others say it's worse. Former FDA toxicologist Dana Flavin says while sugar is burned and turned into energy, high fructose corn syrup turns into fat, causing what's known as fatty liver. She also says sugar can make you feel full, but high fructose corn syrup does not trigger the body's satisfaction gauge, so you always desire more. So you do eat more, and then you have more uh, a greater appetite because your, your, your body's saying, I, I haven't had enough and your body's being fooled. High fructose corn syrup is the main ingredient in soft drinks, but is also hidden in foods like bread and pasta sauce. Dr. Steven Sinatra, author of Metabolic Cardiology, says high fructose corn syrup and its chemical cousins are directly linked to high blood pressure and heart disease, which unfortunately most doctors treat with medication instead of going to the source. He or she may prescribe drugs 
when only the best treatment is loss of weight, exercise, and restriction of simple carbohydrates, sugars. And high fructose corn syrup is a top of the list. Below it, other syrups and sweeteners like dextrose, glucose, lactose, maltose. And speaking of chemical names, beware of monosodium glutamate, MSG, which adds flavor but causes high insulin secretion. And watch out for these ingredients, which usually contain MSG. Hydrolyzed protein, yeast extract, soy protein isolate, spices, natural flavorings, citric acid, anything hydrolyzed or autolyzed. So it creates headaches, migraine, but it can also lead to weight gain. And we have to be vigilant about excluding MSG with all its different names from our diet. Even white flour is a processed food. Its soft texture and mild taste is created by removing the most nutritious parts of the wheat berry, the bran and the germ. The starch left over is digested too fast in the body and can lead to weight gain, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. By contrast, whole wheat flour includes the entire wheat berry, which is digested slowly, making us feel full longer. Processed foods not only create health risks, they also make you look old. Anti-aging specialist Dr. Doris Day, author of the book Forget the Facelift, says young-looking skin starts from the inside. A healthy diet is critical. Some of everything you eat, for better or worse, ends up in your skin. So if you have um, a lot of soda or chemicals, that's going to be a stress on your skin. High sugar foods, highly processed foods, you'll, you'll see it in the skin for sure. So although identifying processed foods and removing them from our diet isn't easy, it may be less trouble than dealing with the health problems they can create. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Folks, I hope you listened to what she was saying. We have a health epidemic in this country of obesity that is just off the chart. Well, 65% of the people are overweight, and uh, the morbidly obese are in a huge group. It's an enormous health hazard, not to mention the cost. And uh, high fructose corn syrup, you know, they used to have cyclamates. Cyclamates, they, they flavored these diet drinks, and cyclamates, apparently, they said cause cancer in rats if the mm. rats drank 5,000 bottles of soda or something, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But it was crazy. They banned them. They bring in high fructose corn syrup, and the corn people are saying, oh, it's just like corn syrup. It's no problem. There's a lot of problem, and it, he, he, Laurie told you what it does. But look at all those other hidden ingredients. We've mentioned here about MSG, which is deadly. And, you know, we did a thing on soup, and lo and behold, the soup companies began to argue, <clears throat> you know, advertise against each other. We don't have MSG, but Campbell's does. Mm -hmm. Campbell's didn't know Progresso, you know, back and forth. In any event, um, they've cut it out, for which I'm grateful. But uh, read the labels. Read them carefully. And then if it's any of this high fructose corn syrup in every single soft drink that you drink, I believe, certainly of the normal variety, the non-diet variety will have it. And I've learned also mm -hmm. that the the uh, diet uh, materials are just as fattening mm -hmm. as the other. Exactly. It tricks the body. But, you know, one of the things I love about that story, kudos for you, Lori. She did a really good job, was that, you know, we say all the time, read the labels, read the labels. But what was so phenomenal about that story is that it explains what is in the label. You can read it all you want, but if you don't know what those little ingredients yeah, mean right. or what it does, then it's not going to do you any good. So good job, CBN News, as usual. All right, let's go. Up next, yeah. a stripper. Wow. She makes a dr jump from prostitution to porn. And I saw the check that was written out to one of the girls there. And I said, that's what you got for doing that? Where do I sign up? Wow, but that's not all she was signing up for. You'll see why when we return. Still ahead, behind the music with Sanctus Real. The story behind their hit song on today's 700 Club. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. 
Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club is already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? To listen to our top songs of the week, go to CBN Radio at CBN.com. Growing up, Danielle Williams could never trust a man. Why? From a young age, she was abused by every one of them. So by the time she became a teenager, Danielle devised a plan to hurt men back. I started to hate men at this time because every time I was hurt, it came from a man. Danielle Williams believed she had good reason to hate men. It began when a daycare provider's son repeatedly molested her starting at eight years old. He instilled that fear. If you tell, this is what's gonna happen to you. And he would hit me, he would physically abuse me. I was scared of him, and then I was like, well, if I tell, maybe I'll get in trouble. So I didn't say anything. She lived with her father after her parents divorced, and she watched him routinely beat every girlfriend he had. He eventually turned that rage onto Danielle, adding him to the list of men she hated. He picked me up by my throat, he lifted me up, and he threw me down to the floor. He beat me so much that I passed out. Danielle's father went to jail for child abuse, and she went to live with her mother in Los Angeles. There, a man in the neighborhood began to invite young Danielle over to his house. She loved the attention from him until the day he raped her. I knew that I hated men even more, even more. Because now I'm 12 years old and I had already been molested at eight. My dad tried to kill me when I was 10. And now this man who I trusted just raped me. I hated, I hated men. But years later, Danielle's attitude towards men softened. When she was a teenager, she fell in love for the first time and thought he was in love too. So this older man is telling me everything that I wanted to hear and more. I just wanted to just be his. After the first time she slept with him, the man told her he was a pimp and wanted her to be his prostitute. Danielle was devastated and refused. Then she discovered she was pregnant with his child. Every time I get with a guy, something bad is happening. I, I'm done. Then you tell me I'm pregnant? I'm 13, I'm in the eighth grade. What am I gonna do with a baby? And the baby's father is a 27 year old pimp. Danielle delivered prematurely, and the baby died within hours. It was over. As far as me caring about life, me caring about myself, me caring about men, oh, men was out the question. I, I was done. I hate, oh, my rage. It, it was a rage that I had for men. The, the sight of, of men made me sick. A friend convinced her she could manipulate and control men by stripping. She started dancing in nightclubs and prostitution quickly followed. She pushed away any thought that what she was doing was wrong. Even though she had been raised in a church, she had no moral convictions. I didn't care. I knew who God was. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't care. I hated men and I thought this was a way to repay them. That's how I looked at it. I'm getting them back for them hurting me. And I felt like I had the upper hand now because before you guys had the upper hand and you were hurting me. Now the roles have switched and that's how I looked at it. One day, Danielle was invited onto the set of a porn film in Hollywood. And I saw the check that was written out to one of the girls there. And I said, that's what you got for doing that? Where do I sign up? because I was making a lot of money as a dancer and as an escort already, you know. But with the porn, I looked at it, that would be an even better 
way for me to make even more money. And I said, okay, let's go for it. After so long, it became normal. It became cool that I was a porn star. Danielle continued as a call girl as well. And one night she accepted a client who turned out to be a psychopath who wanted to kill her. Open the door! And for three weeks, that man came in there and he raped me and he beat me and he told me over and over again, I'm going to keep you. You're not leaving here. And I believed it. I knew that I was supposed to die. And every day I got weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where I just gave up. I collapsed to the floor and I wept and I wept and I wept. But I laid there and I cried so much that I, I couldn't speak. And I got my words together and I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll change my life for you. Don't let me die like this. Not like this. 19 years old. He had to get me to that point to show me that I'm God. I'm still God. It's me and you. And at that very moment, I got my salvation. Danielle prayed to accept Jesus Christ. A few days later, a man overheard her crying and helped her escape. She immediately severed her relationships with anyone in the sex industry and started going to church. Surrounded by new friends, Danielle's life began to change. I was starting to fall in love with Christ. And the more I did that, the more he started to purge me and deliver me and heal me. The more I reached out to him, the more he worked in me. Everything that I didn't have, the relationship with my mother, the relationship with my father, the hurt from men, he filled every void. Danielle is now in ministry full-time, sharing the love of Jesus Christ. There's no sin too big or too bad for Christ. And when everyone else leaves you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm a living witness, a walking example of what Christ can do in somebody's life. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You say, well, boy, she was doing all that. She'd been raped. She was a stripper. She was a prostitute. She was a porn star. She'd done all those things. And God forgave her. The answer is yes. His forgiveness extends to the uttermost. Whoever you are, wherever you are, Jesus Christ died for you. And he loves you. <clears throat> do you want to be free? If you do, I want you to pray with me right now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Just ask him. Bow your head right now and pray these words. Lord Jesus, you know what's happened to me. You know what I've done. You know what others have done to me. Lord, come down to my heart. Live your life in me. And I will live for you. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, that you have heard my prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you've come into my heart. Now, Lord, for those who have prayed with me just then, may the power of God touch them. Fill them with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who prayed, many of you did, I want you to start out. That's the beginning, but there's a whole life ahead of you. And what I want you to do is to go to your phone right now and give us a call. I want to give you something. It's called a new day. And in this little packet is a compact disc, 73 minutes of teaching, that tells you what just happened to you, what it means to have a new life in Jesus Christ. There's also a little booklet in here with the same scriptures. It's all available to you. I'll give it to you free if you just give us a call and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. 1-800-759-0700. We're here because we care about you. Pick up the phone and call in. Say, today I'm free. Today I'm forgiven. Today I'm one with Christ. Christy? Thank you so much, Pat. Well, coming up, have you ever thought what it's like to be married to the front man of one of our biggest bands in Christian music? Well, it's bumpy. I remember being in the back of a Chevy 
van in the way back where there's no seats, sleeping on a sleeping bag six months pregnant and just thinking to myself, I can't do this anymore. But hear what kept this rocky marriage together when we come back. Next week on The 700 Club, Secrets of the Supernatural. A woman hopelessly trapped, suddenly lifted by invisible hands. God sent an angel to pull Lisa out of that car. A fatal heart attack victim. He's dead, he's gone. There's no life in him. Returns to life one hour later. Meet these and other ordinary people touched by the supernatural hand of God on The 700 Club next week. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said, it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there, I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. The president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary says his denomination needs to repent of a, quote, form of homophobia. The Reverend Albert Moeller says Southern Baptists have wrongly condemned gays instead of embracing them as fellow sinners. Moeller says it's right to call homosexuality a sin, but wrong to say it's just a choice that people can turn on and turn off. He says only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ gives a homosexual person any hope of release. From homosexuality. The American Center for Law and Justice has formed a partnership with an international law school in South Korea. The program designed to provide education and training for law students in U.S. and international law. ACLJ Chief Counsel Jay Sekulow says there's a growing need for attorneys around the world to protect religious freedom. The ACLJ has already established offices in Europe as well as Russia, Kenya, Pakistan and Israel. Sekulow says the South Korean office will enable the ACLJ to begin working in Asia, one of the fastest growing continents in the world. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Christie will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Got a question for Pat? Send us yours now on CBN.com. We'll bring it online with your questions from our live chat room later on today's 700 Club. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened, in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. Why are some people selling their gold and buying silver? Because all the silver mined in the past 200 years has been used up by industry and is gone. That's right, silver has become rarer than gold, but it sells for a fraction of the price. Scores of industries must have silver to make their products. Its uses are so varied, silver has been called a miracle metal. The Chinese recently made it legal for its citizens to own silver. That's just one reason investment demand for silver is going through the roof. Investment Rarities Incorporated has been helping clients preserve wealth with silver and gold for over 35 years. They have delivered over $2 billion in coins and bullion to their customers. And unlike other companies who only sell you a certificate of ownership, Investment Rarities ships your silver right to your door. Call Investment Rarities now at 1-800-328-1860 for your free books and reports about silver. Learn how transferring just 10% of your assets into silver could be a good move. Call now.
Saint is Real actually started 15 years ago when a couple of 10th graders got together and formed a band. Led by singer Matt Hammett, they actually released seven number one hits and became one of the biggest names in Christian music. But while Matt was, you know, he was finding his road to success, life at home it was a different story. Marriage started out as an adventure for Sanctus Reels' Matt Hammett and his wife, Sarah. The first four years that we were full-time uh, on the road as a band, Sarah was with me. We had a lot of great times. I would say our relationship grew immensely, but resolving conflict on the road was really difficult. We really didn't have much privacy, um, and it really, I think, caused us to not have healthy communication, and because of that, I think we would kind of bottle up a lot of our feelings, a lot of our frustrations that we would have, it can kind of cause a passive aggressive uh, type of communication. Life changed dramatically for the Hammets when Sarah got pregnant with her first child. I remember being in the back of a Chevy van in the way back where there's no seats, sleeping on a sleeping bag six months pregnant and bouncing around and just thinking to myself, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so that's when I threw in the towel. And I stayed home from that point forward. It was hard to change our life like that. You know, it was hard for me not to have her on the road anymore. And it was hard for her not to be out uh, seeing new things and meeting new people. It was also difficult for both of them to adjust when Matt came home. The hard part about traveling all the time too is that when you come home, you literally just want it to be perfect because you dream of getting back in your house, seeing your family. So you always want to make the most of the little time that you have. The expectations for me were that I would come home and it would just be a place of rest and refuge. I had the mentality like, my time's over and you're up. Like, you got to do all the grunt work and it's your turn. I walked through the door with both of us having great expectations on each other. And when we felt that disappointment and then we started to vent our feelings and our frustrations, it'd be really easy for those arguments to get out of control, for our emotions to get out of control really quickly. We had expectations that seemed logical and acceptable to have towards each other. And then we would fail each other and then we would grow bitterness and contempt and it was so uh, deceiving. It really hit itself well because it's really hard to call out your own contempt for someone because you feel you have a right to it. It got to a place where the cycle that we were in of arguing just felt like we just could not get along. Matt and Sarah were committed to making their marriage work, so divorce was not an option. They laid aside their bitterness, went to counseling, and tried to take ownership of their faults but Sarah still felt something was missing. We were starting to make changes, and I said, that's fantastic, but I really need you to like be the leader in our home. That was the day that God just used her specific words to really break my heart and to really seal inside of me what he'd already begun um, in terms of just teaching me to be more teachable in terms of the kind of man that I am, the kind of leader that I am for my family. That day that we had that conversation is the day that I sat down and looked around me. I looked at all the pictures in our house and I looked at the pictures of her smiling and our kids smiling. I looked at a photo of her wedding day and my heart really ached because I felt as though I hadn't seen that glow in a long time. And I just wanted it back so desperately and just cried out to God in that song that afternoon. Not by being stubborn, but fighting by just laying it all down at the feet of Christ and saying, Lord, you know what? I'm weak. You're strong. Every breath is just going to have to be grace from you to be this man.
playing the end saying, hey, I can't do this by myself. You know, I'm leading my family by saying, Father, lead me because I'm not capable of this. Even just that understanding, once somebody says, I know I'm this way and I really do want to change, that really helped us move forward when we finally accepted our weaknesses, even though we thought we were all along. Today, Matt and Sarah's marriage is stronger than ever. The relationship was tested again earlier this year when their third child, Bowen, was born with a serious heart defect. I think feeling like we were in a really good place in our marriage and we're learning how to deal with that conflict better, it really prepared us because there's so much stress in having a sick child. There is a purpose for what we went through, a God-ordained purpose, I believe it, and He's pulling us through it and He's showing us His grace. And now I think when there's conflict, we understand that, you know, there's hope here. There's a purpose. It's not the end of the world. We can work this out. And it gives us that much more hope and that much more fuel to just keep working through it in ways that glorify the Lord more and more. It's just God's grace. In our weakness, He's strong. Now, anyone who has been married or in a marriage right now knows how difficult and challenging it can be. But you know what? Really, the Lord does have the answers. He can lead you and He can guide you and He can direct you through prayer and through the Word and just through um, uh, strong mentors around you. So if you want prayer for your marriage or for your relationship, we're going to ask you right now, please give us a call. We have so many counselors who are here who can pray with you and minister to you and encourage you. The number is 1-800-759-0700. And um, we just want to love you. They're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I, and I want to give you this too. We actually have this booklet called Love and Marriage. And what makes it so great is it has some scriptural references. It has some just different stories, but it really it gives you some some great points that will encourage you and build you up and and know that listen you're not alone but even the lord he can conquer whatever that challenge is in your marriage and uh god is a god of restoration and love and if you just commit to him listen to him he can make a difference in your life well still ahead if you've got questions we have answers. Rose says, my stepmother is into witchcraft. What should I do? Well, that's a good juicy question and we have a good juicy answer for you when we bring it online from our live chat room. So don't go away. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come visit Capernaum where Jesus restored a paralytic's helpless legs. Sail the Sea of Galilee where Jesus walked on the water. Stroll through the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus healed a servant's ear. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. Tomorrow, James Bond has respect of everybody. A man tries to imitate the movies. I wanted women, and I realized that in order to have the women, I needed the money. And winds up on the wrong side of the mafia. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Plus, American Idol's Mandisa. Think about how your world ain't right. And you Minus 100 pounds. How she did it. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. The teen in our next story can read books, study, and go to school. But not long ago, he was on the verge of going blind. 16-year-old Aloja led a simple life in his village near Kiev, Ukraine. He helped his mother as much as he could, but he had a problem with his eyes. His retinas were detaching, and his vision was getting worse every day. Doctors said if he didn't get surgery within the next two weeks, he could go blind. I tried to get enough money for the surgery, but I couldn't. Eloja's mother only makes $150 a month working as a librarian, and his father had a stroke and can't work at all. 
I was scared about going blind. I wanted to work, but was afraid I would have to stay at home all the time. I asked many organizations for assistance, but no one would help us. So I prayed God would help. I believed in God and put my hope in Him that I wouldn't be blind, but would see. When a pastor heard about Alosha's desperate need for surgery, he called CBN. We immediately sent Alosha to the best eye clinic in Ukraine and paid for his surgery. I was so relieved. We gave thanks to God and to His people. Now I can see out of my boss eyes. It's wonderful. I feel peace in my heart because now my son can read his school books, help the family and go to church with me. I want to express my gratitude to everyone who helped us. I wish you a wonderful life. You taught me by your example to help others and always believe in God. May God give you happiness and health. Thank you. What a wonderful thing. You know, we were in uh, Kazakhstan. We took the flying hospital, or I believe it was the flying, yeah, into Kazakhstan. I was talking to the head of the eye clinic, this lady doctor, and uh, she was telling me how many people had cataracts. And the reason they had cataracts, these youngsters, I mean, 10, 9, 8, 7 years old, hmm. the Russians were sh shooting off nuclear explosions in Kazakhstan. And this, uh, they were getting these things in, the, in their cataracts. And I said, look, I, uh, we can get interocular lenses to take care of that for $90. And she said, we can get them for $50, but we don't have $50. Wow. So a lot of people were going blind with cataracts. And so we were able to help many, many mm -hmm. people. And it's such a thrill to see somebody that can't see. We, we were uh, down in one of the Central American countries, and it was a, uh, <clears throat> a grandmother who'd never seen her grandchild. And, she had cataracts, and we were able to mm -hmm. fix those things. That was in Mexico. Was it Mexico? Yeah, because I think I was on that trip. Yeah. Yeah, with operation with the flying hospital when she had yeah. cataracts. Or, yeah. Well, we were in Pueblo, as I recall. Yeah, was that, that was. One? It was yeah. Pueblo. Okay. Pueblo. Well, Pueblo. Yeah. well, just one more country. But ladies and gentlemen, we can help people. Mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of money. Yep. Give them sight. Give them a decent mouth. G give them freedom from heart troubles. There's so many things we could do for them. Just takes a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Say, well, I've got twenty dollars a month. Well, and, and I, I've got to have a coke every day, so that's going to cost a dollar and a quarter every day, and that's going to be more than sixty-five. So that's mm -hmm. double seven hundred club. Exactly. So stop the cokes. <laughs> stop the lattes. Come on. You know, it'd be so easy to say, okay, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Pick up your phone and call in. Let's help people. And for those who do that, you're going to like this. Uh, I talked to a guy yesterday who works with one of the big uh, broadcast operations, and he, he saw this DVD and said, oh, a wonderful thing it was. It really mm -hmm. touched him and touched others. It's people who actually died, gone to heaven or hell, and come back to tell about it. Life beyond the grave. And we'll give this to you as our gift as you join the 700 Club. So pick up the phone, call in, 1-800-759-0700. And now let's talk about questions. Absolutely. Well, you know, we're a techie kind of ministry, so we're up to date. So we have people as we're doing the show All right. chatting away. And Heather writes in and she says, what, it's, what is it like owning a horse? Is it like really having a big dog? No. <laughs> you have to have a stable. You yes. have to have somebody, either you or somebody to look after the horse. Mm -hmm. The horse has to be watered and fed a couple times a day. It has to have a veterinarian. You've had horses for years. For years, years and years. I mean, I'm talking about 50 years or so we, yeah. or longer. I, I've been riding for 65, 70 years, something. And I, I have to say, and I'm not saying this because you're my boss, <laughs> but I'm saying it, you're a really good rider. You really are. I was watching you kind of trot and doing those sidekick things and those trio things and that ka ticka things. <laughs> you, you really got it now. Yeah, all right. Look at that. Well, I'm going up and down like a sack of potatoes. But anyhow, <laughs> he's a beautiful horse. Well, what's it like? It, no, it's not like having a big dog. But I tell you the thing about a dog. He lives in your house, and uh, the, the horse doesn't bother me and scratch at my door. He's out in the stall or in the pasture. Or like blue, go, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. All right, what's next? <laughs> all right, all right, next question. I have a 10-year-old daughter who wants to learn how to ride a horse. I guess this is horse day question. And in, uh, entering and jumping competitions, what advice? do you have for well I, I think you should get some camp there are camps for young people or there are 
There are uh, barns that do training. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you get a good one. Some of these guys are brutal and they don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. and they, the horses aren't any good. So make sure you go to a high, high quality stable and, and get a teacher who is good. It's not cheap, but nevertheless, uh, you can talk about jumping. Uh, that's the, you know, it's okay, but it's a good way to get your neck broken. All right. I have done jumping. Well, just be safe and careful with it. Ziggy used to shy. I'd go up to a jump. Would she ever, like, stop and flip you over? No, he'd stop and go sideways. That's a smart horse. <laughs> not smart at all. It's You beat them. It's terrible. That's horrible. No, it's not terrible. They can kill you. You don't get killed. Well, I think you'd get killed if the horse has stopped and flipped you over. She's a smart horse. It's She's a he. like, he. It's it, a he. He is sidestepping. It's willful. Well, will, well. You, you can't let them be willful. They'll hurt you. They're that's big. That's, I got you. 1,200 pounds. Big. I hear you. All right. What's All right. next? Well, we're switching. We're going from well, horses to witchcraft. Let's go. Oh, Only boy, on the that, 700 Club. All right. <laughs> Rose says, I have a stepmother who is into witchcraft. What can I do to protect my family from the curses she speaks over us? One more time. A curse caused less cannot lie. You, But you need to bind Satan. Bind Satan mm -hmm. in her. I mean, you know, when you see her, you know, speak to her. I mm -hmm. mean, if, she, if you know she's putting curses, say in the name of Jesus, I bind you, Satan and the forces of evil. Speak it. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd be pleading the blood of Jesus all well, over the place. Pleading. Speak. Speak. Speak and plead. Right. Cameron says, I have always been a loner, but I'd like to be able to make friends at school, but I'm worried that they'll make fun of, fun of me for trying. Do you have any suggestions or what should I do? Pat, how do you make friends? What do you say? What do you do? I'm on television, so it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up the time I got on TV, I was all shy. No. <laughs> He that wants to have friends must show himself friendly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, show yourself interest, but don't be always hanging around and sucking up to the, you know, big football hero or the, you know, prom queen or whatever. Uh, get with some people and see if you can't share. You know, there must be a stamp club, German club, you know, glee club, mm -hmm. you know, something. And get into one of those things where you've got mutual interests and you're sharing those things together. Then you're not trying to intrude on somebody else's deal. That's true. Right. And good old-fashioned kindness. Kindness goes a long way. Oh, yeah. Way. Well, you can always help, help somebody. Yeah, help just them. to say hello. Yeah. All right. Here's a question from one of our viewers who says, Pat, you are always talking about Big Brother. What do you mean by that? And why is it a problem? Like my older brother? No, no. Uh, big Brother, when you, when you look at, uh, at um, the... A famous uh, book uh, about the dictatorship uh, of the world. The dictator was called Big Brother. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like uh, the one who controls your life, mm -hmm. and that's that's where we. It's from Orwell's 1984, mm -hmm. Big Brother. And uh, no, I'm not talking about a, your older brother. I mean, the, the, I'm talking about the one who dominates and who runs the government and who tries to run your life. Mm -hmm. That's the big brother. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, apparently that's all the time we've that's got. The only, that's the time. It was a good show. Did you enjoy the show? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, yes, I, you I, did. <laughs> I, I have to ask the people, what do they think? Tomorrow we have a live performance from American <laughs> Idol's Mandisa. Mandisa. And we leave you today with these words from the Psalms. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. That's all the time we've got. God bless you. And we will be back at the same time tomorrow. Bye-bye. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. When Kitty was abandoned by her parents, she went to live with her grandmother in the middle of a garbage dump. They ate scraps of food from the dump and tried not to get bitten by the rats. That's when you built them a new home and set up a small clothing business near the market for Kitty's grandmother. You rescued them from hunger and fear. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.